So the methods exam is getting close and depending on where you might be in your practice, you might be feeling confident and ready or even nervous and a little bit scared. Regardless of where you are though, I'm here in this video to tell you four of the things that I did before the methods exam that helped me get a raw 46. Hey everyone, if you're new here, I'm Emil and I graduated from high school last year with an ATAR of 99.8 and a raw 46 in methods. So the exam is of super high importance in methods and so as a result, most of the tips I'll be giving in this video are to help you do as well as you possibly can on the exam. But before I get into the first tip, drop a like on the video or consider subscribing to the channel for more videos on how you can ace your exams. So the first thing that helped me the most when getting close to the methods exam was really just doing practice exams. This one is definitely obvious and a lot of people just get told to do practice exams and a ton of them, but there are certain things that you can do that mean that you get the most value as you possibly can from the practice exams that you do. The first thing that you can do to optimize your exams is just doing your exams consciously. Consciously. What this means is that when you do your exam, you want to be giving it your full focus with as little distractions as possible and doing it in the best mindset that you can possibly have. What you really don't want to happen is to sit down for a methods exam, pass the multiple choice section of an exam too, and then suddenly give up because you're not feeling like it on the day. I think a lot of people do this and a lot of people do questions unconsciously, which means that they fall into these habits of doing the same patterns of mistakes over and over again, and they prepare themselves to run out of energy or run out of steam on the actual exam day. The other thing that I thought allowed me to get more value out of the practice exams I did was close to the exam, I did less practice exams rather than just doing more and more of them. Making sure you focus on the quality of your revision is actually really important because one or two properly done practice exams will help you a lot more than three or four exams that are done half-assed or poorly. Even if you're someone who doesn't know much of the content or if you don't know what you're doing, exams will still help you. I promise that regardless of what stage in the preparation process you're in, doing exams will actually help you to get an idea of how questions come up on the exam. And if you look at the answers and look at it carefully, you will actually improve quite a lot. This leads me on to the second thing that I did, which was reviewing past questions really carefully. Reviewing is really important because doing practice exams is one thing, but if you never actually go through your practice exams and look at the mistakes that you made or the patterns of mistakes that you fall into, you'll never actually improve and you'll keep making making the same mistakes from paper to paper. Whenever I look at my methods practice exams, the one thing that I'm really looking out for is a lack of understanding. In methods, you will end up making careless mistakes. You will change the fraction the wrong way around. At some point, you might mistake a positive sign for a negative sign. And these are things that just happen in your exams. However, what you really want to be looking out for are questions where you lose marks due to a lack of understanding rather than from silly mistakes. These are the questions that you can actually improve on and that's how you can actually use practice exams to improve your end score. When I found a question that I wasn't so sure how to do, I'd make sure to get someone to explain it to me. Most of the time, this was my friends that I asked for explanations, but other times I asked my teachers if I couldn't really understand the explanations my friends were giving me. It's really important here that when you're going for understanding that you don't skimp out on it. If you don't understand something fully, make sure you say that, ask questions, get that understanding to 100% so that you can actually answer questions in the future. So the third thing I did before the methods exam was strengthening important skills that I would need on the exam. What this is, is the methods exam requires you to use a lot of skills repeatedly over the course of the exam. These are often things like differentiation and integration, algebra and graphing. And I realized that a lot of the mistakes I was making in my practice exams that were silly mistakes or careless errors were because I had certain weaknesses in these essential skills. If you find yourself to be making a lot of careless mistakes in your papers as well, I'd highly recommend recommend going through a practice exam by doing it untimed and pretty slowly and taking your time to go through the questions to do it with 100% accuracy so that you can strengthen these important skills that are vital for the exam. I know that a lot of things like the chain rule or the product rule or the quotient rule are actually on the formula sheet, but you actually never really want to rely on your bound reference or the formula sheet during the exam because that will mean that you end up wasting time. The other thing that is crucially important is strengthening your skills on the CAS, especially if you're uncertain about what you're using the CAS for or about what some of the functions on the CAS do, I'd highly recommend again going through a paper fully untimed and going through each of the CAS questions and recognizing what you have to put into the CAS 
and why you have to do it that way. It's really important that you control the CAS, not the other way around, and that when you're putting an equation into the CAS, you actually know what result you'll get out before you even put it in. If you don't necessarily have that much time and you don't wanna to have to go through the whole exam with your CAS reviewing everything, I'd recommend just doing a multiple choice section and telling yourself to do the whole multiple choice section only with your CAS and without writing anything down on paper. Doing this will actually make sure that you recognize what each of the functions on the CAS do and that also you are able to use them and use them in the most efficient way possible on the exam. Now, the last thing that you should do before your methods exam is tie up any loose ends you might have. Now, the main thing that I'm I'm gonna put under here is looking at your bound reference. I didn't include the bound reference in any other parts of the video because I don't actually think that you necessarily need a bound reference. If you don't have one, that's totally okay because I only took in my textbook to the exam and I didn't even use it during the exam too. However, if you do have a bound reference, I highly recommend that you have a good read through it so that you know where everything is inside your bound reference so that you can actually quickly reference it during your exam. What you really don't want is to have a question, know it's in your bound reference, and be fumbling around to try and find it and wasting time during the exam. The other thing that I'm gonna include under this loose ends category is taking care of yourself. Particularly really close to exam day, it's very easy to get really stressed and feel really anxious about the exam that's coming up. As a result, make sure you engage in those stress relieving activities go do some exercise, play some sport, do gaming, do whatever you find helps you reduce whatever stress you might be feeling. In addition, make sure that on the night before your exam that you prepare everything that you might need for the test day tomorrow. So make sure you get your pencil case, your rulers, your pencils, make sure there's lead in your pencil. If you use a mechanical pencil, make sure your pencil is sharpened. Do all of those things so that you don't have to worry about it suddenly in the morning. Also make sure that you accept whatever preparation level you might be at because even if you wish you had done more preparation, it doesn't necessarily matter. All you can do is go to exam day and try your best. Above everything, make sure you take care of yourself because if your mind is not healthy for the exam, there's no way that you'll be able to perform as best as you can. All the best and good luck for your methods exam. If you're having any trouble understanding concepts, do check out these two videos where I go through a full methods exam one and exam two. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time.